Notice, did she look like she lost 50 kilograms? Has anyone seen photos of her after having lost 50 kilograms? And so is it actually possible for her to lose 50 kilograms in a year? My opinion is she's lying. I don't think it's true. Ja Ling, I'd like to apologize. I got it completely wrong. Coach Greg, in today's video, we're going to be going over the transformation that Jia Ling claims to have made. Remember, that means claim. She states that she's lost 50 kilograms. She's 166 centimeters tall, probably weighed about 110 kilograms to start. We don't know it. She doesn't say so. And remember, this girl is a comedian. And so perhaps she's joking around. Hey, everyone, I lost 50 kilograms for my role in this movie. And so she plays a boxer. She has to perhaps lose weight to get in shape for her movie. And so I wanted to see how hard would it be for her to lose 50 kilograms in one year for a role as a boxer in a movie. And so what I did is I looked back to her genetics. When she was in her early 20s, she actually looked very good. She was lean. She was in shape. She appeared to have an ideal type of physique. I see no outward signs that she would have had to struggle with her weight. I see nothing about having horrible genetics that perhaps she suffers from PCOS or other form of genetic abnormality. She doesn't have an underactive thyroid, nothing of the sorts. And so what exactly happened? Well, life got in the way. She took her job seriously. She wanted to be a comedian. And so rather than doing cardio, training, eating in a calorie deficit, perhaps doing the healthy things that she needed to do, she just stopped. She gave up. She decided to eat. And so fast forward perhaps 15 years, and she's clearly let herself go. She's morbidly obese. Morbidly obese means that she's so overweight that it is in fact in danger in life. She's taking off years from how long she could actually live. And so my opinion is she's lying. I don't think it's true. I don't think she actually lost 50 kilograms. You saw the movie trailer. You saw how she came out, perhaps 110 kilograms. And then you saw that shadow of that girl and you thought, wow. She did it. She probably lost 50 kilograms. But the lady turns to the side. It's not her. The next silhouette is her body. Notice, did she look like she lost 50 kilograms? Has anyone seen photos of her after having lost 50 kilograms? And so is this all hype? Is it a publicity stunt? Remember, she's a comedian. She's an actress. The actresses and comedians, they know what to say. They know what to do. And so are they just doing this to get your attention? This video topic is going viral. Think of it. I'm making a video about it. Ja Ling, I'd like to apologize. I got it completely wrong. I stated that she never lost 50 kilograms from the movie Lolo, but she actually did. Coach Greg, today's video, it's again about jawling. What a story. I stated that she never lost 50 kilograms, but she actually did. And she did so by gaining 20 kilograms to play this role. Imagine the courage it takes to put on 20 kilograms. That is a lot of weight. And she followed that up by losing 50 kilograms. Absolutely amazing. Imagine the courage it took to gain all that weight and lose it all and then some. We're going to go and look at how she gained all this weight and how did she, in fact, lose all of it off. And so Jolling, she began her journey at 85 kilograms. It's 187 pounds. It's fairly heavy. But she wanted to look fatter than last time for her role in this movie. And so after getting to 105 kilograms, she went on a very strict diet. She was in the worst shape of her life. She felt horrible. But she wanted to show what a difference you can make if you train for an entire year harder than last time. And at the end of the movie, she posted an Easter egg. And so we're going to analyze this Easter egg. It gave us clues as to how much she weighed throughout her weight loss journey. And so January 4th, 210, divide by 2 is 105. She began at 105 kilograms. And so after the first week alone, you can see she lost over 3 kilograms, 3.2 to be exact. That's a lot of weight. But here's the thing. She was bulking. She was eating a lot of food, a lot of water, a lot of salt. And so her weight was bloated. She had high glycogen stores. When you first start on a diet, you're going to lose a lot of weight, but the majority of it is in fact going to be water weight. When you first start a diet, expect to lose weight quickly at first, but it's gradually going to slow down. You can't continue to lose this each and every week. And if you do, it's probably going to be a lot of muscle. 
And so after the first week, she says, it's easy. Of course it is. When you've been force feeding yourself, always eating everything and anything that you want, and you start going on a diet, it might in fact be a relief. Finally, I don't have to bulk up anymore. Finally, I'm eating what I want. And so she naturally lost weight easier than freaking last time. And so in the first month, she loses a total of 13 kilograms. Now, remember, a lot of this is water. After the first week or two, that water weight that you're losing, it's going to slow down. And after that, the majority, it's going to be fat and or muscle. And I do believe that because of the rate of fat loss that she was experiencing, I believe some of it had to be muscle. If you starve yourself, if you start losing 13 kilograms in a month, you're inevitably going to be losing some muscle. And so my advice would have been to lose the weight a little bit slower. Remember, try not to bite off more than you can chew. If it feels easy as it did in the first week, there's nothing wrong with that. It's easy. But if you're fighting off hunger, you're starving all the time, not having much energy, feeling like you're overtraining, it's better to go slower to ease up a little. It's better to do things over the long haul than try to rush your weight loss in a matter of months. And so a month later, she loses an additional six and a half kilograms, about half as much she did in the first month. Remember, this is normal. You're not going to lose weight as fast as it is the first month as you're no longer losing water. And so suddenly one day, one day she slips up a little bit, gains one kilogram. She writes, I'm feeling shitty. Listen, on any weight loss journey, there's going to be good days and there's going to be bad days. Some days you're going to lose a lot of weight. Some days you're going to gain weight. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You may in fact just be bloated. And if you lose a lot of weight, you might just be dehydrated. Perhaps you ate a big salad. You haven't gone to the bathroom. You may even got sick. And even if you slipped up and ate more than you were supposed to, you had a cheat day, it's okay. It is normal. No one diets for an entire year and never has one day where they slipped up. It's okay. Remember, it's not what you do on any one given day. It's what you do over the course of weeks, months, and or years. And in the third month, her weight, it's relatively stable for about two weeks. That is normal. Don't get discouraged because notice what happens after that. Suddenly she loses another kilogram and she's well on her way to reaching her goals. And so just because you have a sticking point for a brief period of time, it's okay. Sometimes it takes some time for the scale to represent what you've been doing on your diet. Perhaps you're just bloated, you're holding on to water. Perhaps you've been traveling, you're stressed out. These things can affect your weight on the scale, even cortisol, stress, lack of sleep. Just keep going. And so apparently in China, we curse by saying MD. In Canada, we think of them as medical doctors. And so shit on you medical doctors in China, we view medical doctors as blasphemy. What's wrong with an MD? Why not put F you? And so is she in fact natty? Apparently the nurse can find her veins. What are we putting in all those veins? What are we putting in those veins? Just asking. And so halfway through this diet, she's mentioning just how hungry she is. She's mentioning that she's weak. Of course she is. She's trying to lose weight at an unreasonable rate. When you try to lose 50 kilograms in a year, you can't expect to undo a lifetime's worth of overeating in a single year and it being easy. If it was in fact easy, everyone would do it. Why wouldn't you? Oh, I went on a diet. How was it? It was easy. I was never hungry. How easy would that be? Now, remember, these people, they don't know about my freaking cookbook. Of course, it could be easy. Easier than freaking last time. Delicious, high-volume recipes for the big eater. She's starving herself. She's always hungry. She doesn't have energy. But imagine if she had the recipes in my cookbook. The cookbook has been translated into Mandarin, along with my Circle Diet book, Life's Work, How to Lose Weight, Keep It Off for the Rest of Your Life. Of course, you want it. Click the link in the description. And so during this year, she repeatedly states how how hungry she is. She's getting injured. She has blisters on her feet. She's suffering. She says, I will never put myself through this again. It's just way too difficult. Remember, she's highly motivated. She's in a movie. Imagine the motivation, the willpower it takes to put yourself through this. She says, I could never do this again. And she's a famous actress. She can't do it ever again. And so what chance would you have? You're not in a movie. You're just trying to get in the shape of your life. Now, do you really think she's going to be able to lose all these 50 kilograms and keep it off forever? I don't think so. It's not realistic. Could she really train hours and hours every single day? day starving in order to keep that physique and so it's not realistic and so remember i keep saying halfway there why do you think i say that because i want you to have a realistic goal that you can achieve and maintain that physique for the rest of your life and so all the work's been put in she's been dieting for about 11 months and now comes peak week and during peak week she does this she stops drinking salt drinks eight liters of water 
What she's doing is she's manipulating her sodium, her water intake. She's going to get dehydrated. By drinking all this extra water, you're forcing your body to continue to pee out. You pee out more than ever before and you become very dehydrated. Your hunger goes down, you're dizzy, you're lightheaded, you don't feel good. But this is what many bodybuilders to do to look as lean as they possibly can. Many people in photo shoots or modeling, they do this in the days prior to competition. And so it allows you to look even leaner. And so that person you see in the movie, that is not a normal state for them. They're literally losing everything they can lose to look as lean as humanly possible. And only days later, she regains that weight. And so during the peak week, she loses approximately three kilograms. That is a lot of weight. But a week later, all that water weight, it's now been put back on the body. And so it's simply a way to manipulate the body to look extra lean. And so if you compare yourself to perhaps actors and movies, people on social media, remember, that is not how they look on a regular basis. That is them at their peak with the best angles, the best cameras, the best lighting, and perhaps even a little Photoshop. And so in the before photo, I'm going to estimate her body fat percentage to be over 50%, about 55% body fat. Now, in the after photo, a little bit more difficult because I do believe that they're using CGI. They are altering her image to make her look leaner and more muscular than she actually is. And so you may remember Chris Hemsworth in the movie Love and Thunder when they ripped off all his clothes and he was flexing and he was chained down. Did you see how much muscle he had? Many people are like, wow, he must have taken steroids. Well, probably took steroids, but but they also did CGI, computer generated imaging. They take the physique and they add muscle here. They take some body fat out there. They make them look bigger and leaner than ever before. And so I do believe they did this in this movie. It's done in nearly every movie. Of course they say they don't use CGI. They only show you what they want to show you. Do you really think they're gonna tell you, oh yeah, we use CGI? Of course they don't. Think of it, before the movie was released, there were no photos of her. No photos showing just how much weight she lost and then suddenly the movie's released and there's movie clips there's video footage there's backstage footage there's everything showing her have you not thought that perhaps maybe these movie makers are controlling exactly what you get to see and so many people in the comment section were saying how yeah you can lose 50 kilograms in a year i never said you couldn't lose 50 kilograms in a year i literally went into detail on how to do that the calorie deficit you need to be in on any given day to achieve that goal and i explained it's not healthy. I had concerns. Yeah, you can do it, but do you really want to do that and lose your period to experience amenorrhea, to have lower levels of testosterone or to lose muscle, to affect negatively your metabolism? Do you really want that? To perhaps develop body dysmorphia. And once you've lost that weight, are you really going to keep that weight off? 95% of diets fail. If you lose 50 kilograms in a year, what percentage of people do you think are actually going to keep off all that weight? If it's only 5%, is it worth it? You have a 1 in 20 chance of it actually working for you. And so rather than that, trying to lose 50 kilograms, why don't you lose half? If you lose half the weight, then that's fantastic. Now you can lose the rest of it. And so please lower your expectations. Try not to starve yourself. Have realistic goals and better luck than last time. And so remember, this is for the ladies. If you lift weights for years, you're probably not going to have nearly as much muscle as this girl. You need to have amazing genetics. And here's the thing. If you go up to the gym, you start bench pressing and suddenly your muscles become too big overnight, as if any guy could even do that. I mean, unless you're taking steroids, it's not going to happen. But if it did happen, if you had the best in the world, you just don't go to the gym next week. Yeah, it's not that difficult, now is it? And so because she lost all this weight, people have been quick to criticize her. You look better before, you were happier. You're now looking sad, you're not so funny. Well, the same thing happened to Adele. Once you lose the weight, a lot of haters are gonna come out and they're going to try to put you down. Why can't we just congratulate her? Good job, you lost all that weight. Rather than saying, oh, now you're not funny. You look sad, you lost all that weight. I'd rather look sad than to die of a freaking heart attack. Do you ever think of that? And so ignore the haters. In the end, it's you against you. You might think it's you against the world. It's you against yourself. Stop listening to other people. You're going to have thousands of comments, opinions, and what you do is this. The negative ones, they go in one ear and out the next. If it's a good comment, go in and keep it there. Be proud of yourself. Stop listening to other people and go after your dreams. And so despite the fact that she posted an Easter egg talking about her weight loss, that she'd posted her before and afters, that everyone was talking about weightless, this is not what this movie is about. It's about becoming a better version of yourself. It's not just the physical. Don't forget the physical, the mental, the social, the spiritual. And so if you're watching this movie, what you want to get out of this is that you can do it. You can become a better version of you. It's you 
against yourself, not you against the world. And so please don't think that this movie is just about weight loss. There's so much more to it. This is not unlike many of my videos. And although I talk about weight loss, I all talk about being a better person. I talk about dating. I talk about becoming a better version of yourself tomorrow than you are today, being better today than you are tomorrow. And so it's all about becoming your best self, whether it's through weight loss, going to the gym, doing cardio, eating healthy, talking to your partner, your spouse, getting better friends, working on your mental health, do whatever it takes to make you better than yesterday. And so give it your all and don't leave any regrets. Just like the movie named YOLO, you only live once. Try to make the most of it. Looking to make transformation, considering hiring coaching plans by me and my team. Also, we have the Mandarin cookbook. It's in Mandarin. You can read it even if you can't speak English. Also has the Circle Diet Book, How to Lose Weight, Keep It Off for the Rest of Your Life. It's an excellent deal. It's available on the website. Click the link in the description. Don't forget to comment. I can't wait to read the comments. I got Vince translate them because I can't read Mandarin. If you have an opinion, a strong one, please leave it faster than last time. Like the video. And until next time, I am out. Oh, Look no. at my back.